Welcome to Engaging Math Students with Desmos. Today, this will be a video, a 30 minute video, giving you a brief overview of how you could use Desmos with your students, your younger students in math. Some fun, engaging ways to change it up and explore math with them that they will like. So this will be an overview. I'll show you some ways. Of course, Desmos is way more in depth but only have a certain amount of time, but you can learn about Desmos on your own. Of course, reach out to us, our ed tech team, if you would like more trainings and sessions and information about Desmos. Also, you can attend our tech conference this summer. This summer, we'll be having a ed tech conference. It'll be at the Professional Development Center. The theme is Candyland, but we're calling it Techie Land. It's on July the 27th. Like I said, at the PDC, and we're looking for presenters. If you're a teacher that uses technology well in your classroom, you can present and highlight yourself and promote yourself and promote yourself to the district and show us what you're doing in your classrooms and share your wealth with other teachers. We would gladly appreciate that. We will be having prizes for our presenters. We'll do a drawing. Your name goes into the drawing and you will win a nice prize. So definitely put yourself on the list if you want to jump out there and present something to the district. Also, we're looking for participants to actually come and have fun with us during this day. We're going to have Candyland snacks. We're going to be taking pictures. We have a photo booth. We'll have food trucks. We definitely will have prizes. But most importantly, you will have fun, engaging sessions to learn all about technology right before school start. Incorporating and engaging technology in your classroom and curriculum is important to us. We're all former classroom teachers, so we know how to incorporate it into your subject areas that you're teaching. So definitely come out with us and get some sweet tech tips on this day that we can share with you guys. So I did want to give this plug. Techie Land is coming July the 27th this summer at the Professional Development Center. Please sign up to present and sign up to come and actually engage with us. We'll see you guys there. Before I get too deep into Desmos, let me introduce myself. My name is Nikki Washington. I am a technology facilitator here in our district, of course, in our ed tech department. If you have any questions after today's presentation, definitely email me at nwashington1 at ebrschools.org. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Today, you'll be seeing the presentation from a teacher's lens, but also you will have the opportunity to view it from a student's lens. To do that, you can go to students.desmos.com and type in the following code right here, Q-N-E-H-M-3. This code will only be available for two weeks. After two weeks, the code will expire. So it gives people enough time. You see the date down here, February the 26th. So it gives people enough time to view the video, interact with the lesson, because it's good to keep both lenses on as a teacher and see how, how does it feel from the student's perspective? Is it something that's gonna work from your students or your students, I should say. So you'll be able to see from both lenses today. So you'll watch me for a teacher's screen. And then of course you can log in as a student and see if this will actually work for you and your students. So go to student.desmos.com, type in this code, and you can respond to questions inside of the lesson to actually see if this is something your students will like or you would like as a teacher. It's always good to have a why. Why do something? Because as educators, I know we have a million things going on. And there's a million tech tools. So I just want to give you my top three reasons on why I use Desmos and maybe why you should. Number one is free. It's totally free. Everything is free. You don't have to pay for anything. So as teachers, of course, we love free things. Number two, it has an amazing teacher dashboard that I'll show you in just a few minutes where you can anonymize your students, which I love to protect them from being hurt or their feelings being hurt or teased or anything if they do happen to have a wrong answer. So we protect their privacy that way. You can freeze their screens to regain their attention. And you can even see a snapshot of your whole class on one screen. And you can even choose whether or not the students can see other students' responses. So I love that. And I'll explore that with you guys in a few minutes. Also, this is the top one for me as a math teacher. It develops conceptual understanding. Of course, as a math teacher, we need our students to have that conceptual understanding. So they're in a, they have so many different ed tech sites. And sometimes a digital worksheet is fine. It's just enough. But sometimes you need more than that, of course. But Desmos is great for exploring and really building conceptual understanding. 
and which is sometimes hard to do in a digital format. So Desmos really helps you with that. So I love using Desmos. And most people actually think that Desmos is just a graphing calculator that high school students use on Elite 2025 assessment. But it's not true. It's definitely more than just a calculator. And yes, it was originally designed for secondary, middle school, high school students. But of course, our elementary teachers, we don't want to be left out if we found some creative ways to actually use it and beneficial ways to use it with our learners. They have so many pre-made items made by educators in the elementary grades that you can use. And I'll link some of those in the description of the YouTube video for you guys. Desmos activities are very powerful to use with your learners. I promise you that. And I know there are so many different platforms around, but I would highly recommend incorporating this one into your learning. If it's small groups, if it's sometimes whole groups, however you want to do it for homework, you'll see the benefits of it. Students can definitely benefit from it. Earlier, I talked about the Desmos teacher dashboard. So let's review the dashboard. So on your dashboard, you'll see the title of your presentation. You'll see the join code so you can prompt the students when they come in. They'll know to, they'll see that code up there and they can just join in without interrupting, trying to find out where you are and how can I get it. It's always up on your screen. This is where the teacher could actually take snapshots of the student's work that you may want to highlight or discuss. You can have that. There's also a summary screen. It shows you what, where your students are, how many students are logged into the lesson, and what slide they're on. So if, let me make this just a little bit bigger so you can see. You see here I have one student in the lesson, and they're on slide one. They haven't done anything yet, of course. Then you have your teacher screen. This is where you would present your lesson. You see how many screens I have here. Then you have your student screen. You can preview your students and look at it as from a student as well. So those are your options here. Also, these are some of the features that I talked about earlier when I was giving you my why, why I use Desmos. You can anonymize the students. So if you click here, you see anonymize mode is on. The students' names have been changed here. So when you go um, to your summary, they have a fake name here, which is cute. They, have, they come up with some cute names. You can turn it on or off at any given time. This is a big one. You can control the pacing. So you may have some pre-bell work here from slides two to six, and they'll be able to freely go through those slides and complete the activity, but they won't be able to go past those. The next set of activities, maybe it's something you want to walk the students through. You definitely can do that, and they're only restricted to go through those slides. I love that feature. And you can also pause. With the screen pause, um, the student side says pause screen. They can't do anything. They're locked, so you're going to have their attention. So that is the teacher's dashboard. It's awesome. I love it. It's so easy to utilize. So I'm going to unpause, and I'm going to go to slide three, and I'm going to turn on pacing because maybe my kids have a hard time staying on task. So I'm going to turn on my pacing. So you can see I just turned on the pacing here. So I'm now in control. When I move this over, the student screen will switch over to the next slide with me. So I'm not wasting instructional time. So with Desmos, they have all of these wonderful pre-made activities, such as you can check in with a student just to see how they're feeling today. So you can see here, student one has checked on and you see how easy and fast the response come through. So student one is feeling stressed. So I may see that in his work today, but it's good to know I have that documented. The student is stressed. I can go back and check with him or her at a later time. So they have these wonderful check-in screens just to check in with your students. We should check in just to make sure they're okay so we can have conversations with them later. So this is another screen the uh, with different images you can create here. This is a cool one that I like to use. I'm going to put it on students so you can see, make it just a little bit smaller. And what the students do is they just slide the bar. Right now it's in the middle, so that means I'm okay. I can slide it over. You see I get the robot gets more angry. Or I can slide it all the way. I'm great today. So And then they can even put a little response here and share it freebie with their teacher with and not worrying about anyone sharing it out and you can just have a look, conversation with them later so those are some quick check-in screens that that are pre-made that you can find in Desmos by by the end of today's session I hope that 
you will consider how Desmos can allow for students to show their mathematical thinking, how it's going to foster collaboration and shared thinking and learning, and also help teachers respond in the moment to student data right here. So those are some things I want you to think about as we go throughout today's session. And if you're following along as a student and you're logged into the lesson, you definitely can respond to this because I would like to know, have you used Desmos in your class before you can answer truthfully there to just to let me know, have you used it or have you heard of it or whatever the case, whichever answer best suits you. So definitely respond to that. And the first part of Desmos I'm going to go into is the Desmos polygraph. If you guys are, you know, a little bit seasoned and you played the board games, you came up through that board game era, we played Guess Who. This was a fun board game where you had to guess who the suspect was and ask questions. So you could definitely respond to this and let me know as well. As a student, you'll see you're able to um, respond yes or no, and even give me a response here. And they do have an area where the students can even record their response or add an image there. But... I love this polygraph feature in Desmos. The students love it. They'll beg to see it. So in the next minute or so, I'm going to preview the polygraph for you, show you with just the little suspects here that they have to show you how the original board game kind of works and then how you can actually incorporate it into math. And you can actually play it if you had a partner. So you guys probably won't be on at the same time in here because it's just a few people probably getting on or reviewing the video at different times, but you can definitely watch my video to see a preview of how it works. This is my top favorite feature in Desmos. Now I'm gonna show you a practice round of how Desmos Polygraph actually works. So here, I'm actually having to select a suspect. So I'll just select any suspect, I'll select her, and then I'll hit next, and now, I'm partnered with a computer. Your students won't be partnered with the computer. They will actually be partnered with someone in your classroom. So the computer is asking the question. So that other student, if the student picks a suspect, the other student will be responsible for asking yes or no questions. And then the person that selected the suspect, which is me, I have to say yes or no. And based off that, the other partner will eliminate suspects. So watch and see how it goes. So my partner asked, is your person wearing glasses? So I have to look and see, yes, they are. And based off that, my partner can begin to eliminate what you want them to do. So they were able to eliminate a lot of people. So is your person, sh person showing their teeth? I need to look and see, yes or no. And they have to be honest. So yes, my person is. So based off that, they can go eliminate everybody that's not showing their teeth. So those are good questions that they've asked so far. Is your person wearing jewelry? Yes or no? So I'm going to say no. And based off that, they're able to eliminate. Is your person in front of a striped background? Yes or no? No. So my person is able to select, and they were able to answer the questions in four with four questions. So that's how polygraph actually works. So that was a practice round. You can see here, um, it's a teacher students. You don't actually have to have math here. You can put something fun so they can learn how the game goes. And this is one that you could practice if you're signed in as a student, you'll be able to practice. Hopefully if there's another partner on at the same time with you, but it's very fun. The students love it. It helps them work with their vocabulary answering questions and working together. So check out Desmos Polygraph. This is another example of Desmos Polygraph. I'll show you a couple more just so you can see how you can tie it into math. This one, you can see clocks are here as the suspect. And with the clocks being here as the suspect, I would definitely tie this into angles. So of course this may be for your older students. So on this time, this time you'll get to see the student actually asking the questions. The suspect has already been selected by the other student, which Desmos has automatically paired. The teacher didn't have to do anything. If you have like an odd number of students, then they may be left in the waiting room waiting for someone to finish their game and they'll be able to play with them or you could hop on as a student and play against them. So let me just ask a question. Does the clock have a cute angle? Something real quick. So you can see how it goes and the student just hits send. And then based off that, the other student will um, answer yes or no. So they just read my question and they answer yes or no. So this student said no. You can see the partner's choice right here. So based off that, 
then I, that student could go ahead and eliminate so that the clock does not contain acute angles. So with that being said, the student could go ahead and make some eliminations here. All right, and then based off that, and they don't have to eliminate all of them. They may not have noticed all the acute angles. That's fine. They can get them the next time if they miss one. So, and then it's left for the person to ask another question. It goes on and on until that person either gets it wrong or right. Here's another quick example. This one could be for your lower grades, K, first, second grade, depending on their reading levels. We do have kindergartners that can read fluently. So yes, kindergartners can use this depending on their level. First graders and second graders as well, depending on their level, they may need to get a little assistance, but we do have kids that are able to do this to type, read, and comprehend for our little, little kids. But they could, the questions they could ask is, does your image contain more than 20 cents? Is it greater than 20 cents? Does it have more than five coins? It could be very creative on what question. It depends on which direction you want them to go and what is the objective of this polygraph. So I just want to show you another example. Desmos card sorts is another one of my top favorites. And I like that it provides immediate feedback if the teacher does that when they're setting it up, sets an answer key, and the students will be provided with immediate feedback once they're completed with the activity. So let me put it on as a student so that they can see. Or actually, let me do it uh, from a student here on my other screen. And what the students do is, and I'll show you here that part. So what the students do is they drag and drop it in together. So you see this is groups of two, groups of two, four groups of two. So these are equal to the same amount. So I could just drag and drop those in there, take those images and place them inside of there. Groups of two, groups of two, three plus two, three groups of four and four groups of two. So as a summary, you can see this is also, I want to come back to this. You can see here, this is where the student is. They're following along with me. If I go back into teacher mode, I can see what the student has done. And this is what this student has done so far. I can see provide feedback and say, oh, you haven't matched those. And then right up here, it can show the correctness that for the students. And let me go ahead and finish that on the other student's side. So let me switch back summary just so it could pick up and then go back to teacher mode and load the student responses. And this is now as a teacher, I'm able to see what the student did and I could check for correctness as well. So there it is. The student got that correct. And here's the answer key that the teacher pre-made built into the lesson. So they're able to see. So I think that's pretty awesome right here. The students are able to check their lesson for correctness and feedback. If the teacher wants to provide feedback, they can. So I love that that's built into the lesson, you know, cause some activities, we don't have to wait for a teacher to provide the feedback is built in. And this card, the card sorting is one of those features. I love it. And this is just showing you other card sorting ideas. I'm not gonna actually do them, but things that you can do with your students. Like I said, these activities can be done with young students that can read and use a computer, of course, and use a mouse and our mouse pad, but they can be done with our younger students as well. They may need a little bit of assistance. And then this is something you can do with your older students. Another example, here's another example. Another example here that you could do with your students. So sky's the limit to what you can do and it's not, to be honest, these activities, yes, this is a math program. She can use it for other subjects as well to help the students learn those vocabulary, things that you want them to do. So I highly recommend the card sort. Of course, I did say polygraph is my top feature, but I love this too because I can build in feedback and the students can get immediate feedback on how well they did on the activity by the teacher creating the answer key. Also, if you are following along as a student, be sure to respond to my question. Just curious on how you would like to use it with your student. 
Another feature that I find very useful for our elementary students is the Desmos ordered list. I love this. And as like with the other activities that I've shown, the teacher can create an answer key. And that way the students are able to get immediate responses or feedback, I should say, on how they did. So let me move this over so you can see here. You can see that the student got it correct, but the student, I have it set to where they can edit their response. So maybe they submitted that um, for their response. And then you can see, okay, this student got it wrong. So you'll be able to get immediate feedback. They should have placed their answer choices this. But also you could even check students. If you had a lot of students, that each student has a checkbox by their name. You can check their name. You can take a snapshot to have that for later, or you can even use this to send feedback to the students, type of feedback response to the students, and they receive that as well. So I love that as well. And this is just some other options that you have here. So let me put it in student view. So the students actually just drag and drop the numbers, which is a great feature. They just drag and drop the numbers in order from the least to the greatest so they just literally drag and drop them and place them in order this is great for students our elementary students that's another way to utilize that feature and this is another example of the drag and drop it's another example it's great for that so definitely see people utilizing it in different ways so could you please if you're following along as a student leave me how you would like to use this or you see yourself using this with your students the ordered list i love this feature Desmos is just great for getting a mathematical response from your students. So you can see here, um, if you click that keyboard, it'll be able to give that mathematical response. So if this was a fraction or a problem that needed them to use exponents or anything like that, they'll be able to use that to type their response here. So you definitely just have images to get a quick math response, mathematical response here. And they can actually use this that keyboard to put in those expressions and also they can type words here and then that response would be shared with the class. So let me do that on this side, just type a number here. And then on the teacher side, you'll see that one student has responded and they'll be able, you'll be able to share that with the class if you like. So love that, just a simple feature because a lot of programs that we find for ed tech, you're not able to use the mathematical symbols as math teachers that makes us a little upset so simple mathematical expressions can be responded to with this program also this is just another example of just assessing if the students um know something so this is going to show the correctness i have it checked over here on the right hand side and they'll be able to tell me the response to this question simple question and as a teacher i'll be able to do that you can also insert images and media videos in here and have the students respond to it i think that's very cool so you have that feature as well and now let's look at the sketch feature as a math teacher you need to see the students thinking their work what are they thinking i want to see it show it to me there's a sketch feature that's built in that I think is awesome. So let me place this in student view. So right here you have the turkeys here. These are things that are already built by the system. I didn't create those things at all. So the students can just place the turkeys in here, following the instructions that's here. And so I like they're getting drag and drop options in here as well. And now they have to move the turkeys in there. Now they write a number sentence, things they would typically do in their math class. So turn on the pen and they'll write a math sentence. They put four in one box plus the five. And they can count it up and write what it's equal to. This is the sketch feature, awesome. It shows me their thinking. They didn't have to really model their thinking with a drawing. We provided it for them, but as a teacher, I'm able to model it. So students will have different ways that they organize the turkeys in the two boxes here. So that's cool. Like that, the sketch feature. That's one way to use it. Then this is another way. So here we did a math about me. So this is an introductory activity you probably would do at the beginning of the year. Just explain it to them, having fun with math. You could do that. 
This is an example. If you want to try it, you definitely could try that out. And then this is another sketch feature right here where the students have to use the sketch tool to illustrate their thinking. So maybe I want them to write an equation after they split the peaches up. Give me an equation explaining your thinking model sketch all over it, whatever you want to do. So you can take images and put an overlay on it and the students can sketch all over it. It's great for math. And we talked about this. So here you can have the sketch over here where they can write doodle all they want. Then they can also come over here and choose a multiple choice answer. So what I like about Desmos is I can have more than one feature on the screen. I can include the sketch, the writing. I can also put multiple choice in here, a text box all on one screen. So you're also able to add more than one feature of Desmos at a time on a screen. That's very cool. And this is another example. This was also created by someone in Desmos. They were able to just slide that over. And then they have to come over here, show their thinking right here. So these are just some fun, creative activities that were pre-created by others in Desmos that you should consider. And then this is just another way that you can use the sketch feature to model thinking. It goes great with Eureka. And then here's another example again. Then this is another example. It's going to be great for fractions for students to model their thinking. This is another example here, like sky's the limit. Now this is one of my favorites because, you know, we our students kind of struggled with that. And now our upper grade students, th three through five, they take that leap test online. So this gives them great practice with using that digital protractor to measure their angles. So it's going to teach them how to use that protractor. They know they need to line it up. And then they know if this line is going through this zero, then that's the scale you use, all that great stuff. So you can teach them how to use that digital protractor to prepare them for the leap test. So there are some great, awesome features in Desmos that I encourage you guys to take a look at and see if this will actually work for you and your students. So this was just a quick, simple overview today to get you thinking and require more training, of course, because Desmos has a lot of pieces to it. It has a lot of bells and whistles. So of course you would have to practice and it would have to come in and take you step by step and incorporate it with your students. But it's a wonderful free platform, great for math teachers. I love it. So definitely let us know if you want to learn more about Desmos. We'll continue to push out more sessions. We can even come in to your school, push out more sessions, and you'll definitely see some this summer at the Techie Land EdTech Conference.